Hello and welcome to Talk Gnosis for June 20th, 2012. I'm Father Anthony and joining me as always is Bishop Thomas Langley. Bishop, hello. Good evening, Father. How are you? I'm well. I'm hot, but well. Yes, it's, it's very hot. It's very hot today. Um, it's probably 150 degrees and uh, it's uncomfortable, but we're going to do a show anyway. Uh, so tonight's topic is Valentinian Cosmology. Um, kind of an, an interest of both of ours. Uh, and if you are watching live, uh, please join us in the conversation. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them right in the YouTube live chat or uh, live comments uh, section, and you can post any of your comments and questions there. So let's get right into it. Um, what, uh, what do we have to say about, about uh, Valentinian cosmology? Well, but before we get into cosmology, and, and um, it's, it's going to take some time to get into it, maybe even a couple of discussions, but um, you know, one of the questions that comes up frequently is, is, is why is it important? Because the, you know, the first thing that any of us do when we look at the, the Gnostic Gospels, the Gnostic Scriptures, the Nakamadi writings and related texts for the first time, is we, we run into all these very complicated looking lists of new and bizarre names. And there's a tendency uh, that I've found and, and that to just you know, sort of skip through that and look for the, the things that we think are, you know, gnostic -y sounding uh, in, in these writings and, and skip over all that stuff as if it's not important. And, um, you know, a lot of us have done that for, you know, for a long time. That stuff's not really important. What's really important is the stuff about Gnosis. And yet, when you, when you take a look at what the Gnostics said about themselves and what they said about what they thought was important, you, you find out that not only is the cosmology important, it was, actually, it was actually essential and, in fact, made up part of what they, call, they called Gnosis. Um, I mean, the, we know we're all familiar with the text from the excerpt uh, from Theodotus that says, what makes us free is the gnosis of who we were, of what we've become, of where we were, of wherein we've been cast, of where to we speed, of where from we are redeemed, of what birth truly is, and of what rebirth truly is. So gnosis to the, the community that we're calling Gnostics actually included a, an immediate experiential knowledge and understanding of this cosmology. And you'll see it over and over again when revelation comes uh, to, to, you know, to, to Gnostics uh, by whether it's Seth or Jesus or some other you know, revelatory figure. Their message isn't just you know, sort of New Age bromides about you know, you're, you're divine and everything is one. It, it actually included some pretty complicated doctrinal things. And we have a tendency as, as Gnostics to think that we're post-doctrinal and mm -hmm. that you know, dogma and doctrine are bad things, but to a, the classical Gnostics they were important. And, and for us as modern Gnostics they're important because cosmology determines anthropology, our view of, of men and women and of the state that we're in. And that determines how we get out of the state we're in and how we're liberated. And without an understanding of the scheme of things, we don't have a map forward. So, um, you, you know, so let, let's let's start off. Uh, you know, as an overview, um, uh, Valentinian cosmology starts with this primal being. Um, oh, we're going to charts already. Okay. Um, okay, we don't have to. <laughs> okay. Um, with this this uh, this primal uh, ineffable father, the Godhead. Um, who had who had really two components, a male and a female component. Yeah. Um, the the bythos, which means the depth or the profundity, is also known as uh, the unknown father, the supreme father. Um, he's described as uncontained, incomprehensible, and uh, cannot be seen, cannot be heard. Again, fitting with the theme that we've we've touched on in earlier discussions about the, the apophatic uh, nature of Gnostic theology, particularly in describing the monad. 
so, but this Bythos, this 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 godhead, also um, incorporated masculine and feminine characteristics. So you had you had Bythos, which was the depth, and um, the ineffable, the first father, um, and then you had uh, the the other half of the dyad, the feminine aspect, which was called um, Anoya, and or or silence, or or thought sometimes, and this is the aspect through which the Father provides the universe with substance. And so she's the, uh, the active, creative thought that, uh, that sort of gives, out of this silence, causes things to come forth, causes the further emanations. Mm-hmm. So, the so we're looking at the, the syzygies again, right? The, the All the way down this, this Ogdoad, we're looking at pairs, right? Right. And, and throughout... The, the realm of the aeons that we'll be talking about, the, the pleroma, we'll see um, over and over again dyads, uh, the, the male and the female, and, and that frequently those dyads are unions of, of opposite or contrasting concepts. So, so we start off with the, the initial dyad, the, the bythos, along with the noia. The, the depth, the abyss surrounded by the first thought. And that first thought, um, the, the Father through that first thought brings forth the only begotten Son. Now, you know, one of the interesting things that we've seen in other discussions of Gnostic cosmologies and, and aeons and emanations is that even though this emanation is called the only begotten Son, it is also a male and female dyad made up of uh, nous and aletheia, which is mind and truth. And, and this is what we refer to as, and what scripture refers to as the only begotten son, which is a common theme, uh, not just in scriptures that are identified as Valentinian, but, but even in, in uh, you know, canonical gospels. So, like the Father, like the Ineffable Father, the Son is also uh, androgynous and, and made up of a male and female dyad. So, at this point in the, in the emanations, we have, we have the Father and the Son. Um, and they are sometimes referred to as the original four. Um, these, these, uh, they're, they're two sets of dyads who then give birth, give birth to the, the rest of the aeons. And the next emanations that come from them are, again, a, a male and female pair, uh, Logos and uh, Zoe. Logos, of course, is a word we're all familiar with, meaning word. And Zoe is one of the Greek words for, uh, for life. And then from them, uh, the next emanation that comes forth is anthropos, which means man, and church. And now, this pair of word and life, logos and zoe, were generated in the image of their sort of grandparents up the chain of emanations, depth and silence. And then the second pair of emanations here, anthropos and ecclesia, were created in the image of mind and truth. And they sort of represent the, the, the natural, the pleromic state of, of humanity united with the church. So these, these emanations that we have here are referred to as the Obduet. And um, According to uh, Valentinians, um, they were referred to specifically in the prologue uh, to the fourth gospel. So when John, uh, or the author of the gospel, John says, the word existed in the beginning, um, Valentinians believed that he was referring to mind and truth. And when he refers to the, um, 
what was made uh, had life in union with the word in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 4, he was referring to uh, also to word and life, the pair of, the pair of uh, emanations there. So the, the next thing that happened in this process of emanations is that Logos and, and Zoe, who were part of the Ogdoad, um, brought forth five other sets of dyads, one after the other. And they are referred to as, as the Decad. And they were brought forth in honor of our original pair, which was depth and silence, Bythos and Anoya. And these these ten principles, these ten emanations, these ten uh, uh, personifications of the thoughts of the divine um, are principles which are referred to as the necessity for an ethical or moral life. And one of the things that's interesting is that we sort of, we, there's some interesting pairings here. Um, the, male, the male side, Bythios, Agoratos, etc., tend to refer to stability. And the female terms tend to refer to, to union um, and change. And that's a theme that runs right through the, the entire decade. And then uh, the next the next set of uh, emanations that we would look at would be the would be a set of twelve, uh, which are called the dodeca. Now these twelve were generated by Anthropos and Ecclesia, man and church, and they were generated in honor of our second set of original emanations, which were mind and truth, Nous and Aletheia. And these six pairs, these twelve, refer to uh, perfected humanity and, and to the church, and to the characteristics of the church. So the, the decad refer to ethical qualities, and then the, the dodecad, which is what we ha we're looking at now, uh, Heracletos, which is helper and faith, uh, eternal and hope, refer to characteristics of the church, specifically, and of perfected humanity united to the church. Mm -hmm. And the Valentinians were, were real churchy folks, weren't they? Well, uh, yes. I mean, their, their practice centered on, on sacramental life. And, and as this shows us, uh, they believed that the church was actually a pre-existent uh, emanation of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, all of these uh, all these charts are going to be available in the show notes for download. So feel free to take a look at those and uh, you know pick them apart as much as you'd like. Um, so yeah. uh, any last thoughts you'd like to? To bring well, up about cosmology? I think we need to tackle the, the rest of this um, in, a, in a second discussion so we can talk about um, what went wrong in this process of emanations mm -hmm. and we can talk about uh, the, the Gnostics, the Valentinian Gnostic scheme of uh, restoration uh, to the Pleroma, uh, which is specifically tied into their, their cosmological. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have many, many more discussions about the Valentinians. All right, so uh, do we have some news, Bishop? Uh, yeah, we wanted to mention, uh, first of all, one of the friends of uh, Talk Gnosis, a faithful listener and commenter, Eric Bryant, has just announced that uh, he's finished and published online uh, a book that he's put together, a short little, uh, I guess, a 40-page book called Revising Basic Orthodox Christian Doctrine, One Gnostics System. And you can check that out at uh, Amazon.com. And uh, we'll, we'll put the link up on our show, our show notes as well, right? Mm -hmm. And also, um, we want to announce that um, our own Father Anthony is uh, raising funds to, uh, to to help finish 
his book, which is called Sanctuary, the Sacred Flame, a Guide to Joanite Spiritual Practice. And um, that link is at HTTP. Uh, well, well, we'll post it on the website, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. But it's uh, bit.ly slash Joanite Practice. Two ends in Joanite. And we're at 32% of our goal, so it's good. We're, we're getting there. And this will be the, 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 the first book published that really sort of details uh, the practices of the Joanite tradition as practiced by the AJC. Uh, the AJC, yeah, and um, it, it'll be some of the practices. I mean, there, it would be a very, uh, very large book indeed to to detail all of the things that all of the Joanites did. But this is a uh, this is kind of a survey of things that I have been collecting over the years, practices and prayers and, and rituals and all kinds of stuff. So uh, hopefully, it'll be useful to some people who are interested in Joanite spirituality but don't necessarily have a uh, have a parish to to go to. And, uh, and having said all that, um, if you would like to leave us some feedback, please uh, leave a comment in our YouTube comments or email us at talknosis at gnosticnyc.com. Find the full show notes at uh, gnosticnyc. Uh, um, and I should do this while I'm doing that. I'm very unprepared. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, if you have... Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them either on our email or at talknosis at uh, or our social media links will be in the description. Uh, coming up on Talknosis, uh, very possibly uh, on the 27th, we have Jeffrey Kupperman, very possibly, to talk about Neoplatonists. We're still working out the details on that, um, but if, if, he doesn't, uh, if he isn't able to do that particular date, we will certainly reschedule him soon, uh, and we'll find something else to talk about. I'm sure we, we can find something else to talk about. And coming up at Gnostic NYC, uh, on the 15th of July at 2 p.m. at the Center for Remembering and Cheering, 123 Fourth Avenue in Manhattan, second floor, Greg Kaminsky from the Occult of Personality podcast will be talking to us about esotericism in colonial Pennsylvania. And after that lecture is done, it will also be available here on our YouTube page. If you have any questions for Greg about esotericism in colonial Pennsylvania, email info at GnosticNYC.com and we'll pass those along. And for all of our upcoming events, see GnosticNYC.com for all of the details and, uh, and you will find them all there. If you'd like to support us, please visit our website and on the bottom of the left-hand column, there's a blue button that says support us. Please click that and donate some money. We would really appreciate it. It helps us bring in great lecturers. It helps us put on some of these great programs that you have come to expect. And Talk Gnosis is a production of Gnostic NYC, promoting Gnosticism in New York City. You can find us online at GnosticNYC.com. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with friends. Click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Uh, opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the views of Gnostic NYC or of any other organization. No animals were harmed during the production of this show. For more talk gnosis, tune in live every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a good night. Good night.